Hello and welcome to News at 10 on Raja Sabha TV. I'm Ashwarya Kapoor. Let us begin with the headlines. Another terrorist attack in Jammu and Kashmir. Militants fire at a security post guarding minority community in Shopian district. One policeman killed, another cop and a civilian injured. Home Minister reviews security with officials of four states that share border with Pakistan. Rajnath Singh announces that India will seal the entire border with Pakistan by December 2018. India to raise issue of cross-border terrorism at 8th BRICS summit in Goa. BIMSTEC members invited to summit to further strengthen support to India on the issue. Hurricane Matthew triggers mass evacuations along the coast from Florida to North Carolina. Almost 1.2 million homes and businesses left without power as the hurricane blasts through the east coast. And India win the toss and elect to bat against New Zealand in the third test at Indore. Kohli's men will look for a whitewash after winning the first two tests, while the Kiwis will look to salvage some pride. A top story this morning, a policeman was killed and a constable and a civilian were injured after terrorists fired at a security post in Shopian district of Kashmir on Friday night. Now, according to security officials, the firing took place at 8.30 p.m. at a police station post in Herapora area of Shopia. Now, militants tried to snatch police weapons from the policemen deployed at a minority post guarding families of the minority Pandit community. A search operation has been launched to track down the terrorists after they managed to escape after the attack. Now, the injured have been shifted to the army base hospital. Meanwhile, amid escalating tension between India and Pakistan and repeated ceasefire violations along the international border, Union Home Minister Rajnath Singh on Friday said that the government has decided to seal the entire stretch of the Indo-Pakistan border by December 2018. The Home Minister met officials of the four states that share a border with Pakistan to take a stock of the security measures in place on the border. Home Minister Rajnath Singh announced on Friday that India will seal the entire border with Pakistan by December 2018. In a meeting to review security with Home Ministers and senior officials of the four states that share border with Pakistan, Rajnath Singh said that a proper monitoring mechanism would be in place at the central and state government levels for the same. December 2018, जो भी एक्शन प्लान तैयार किया है वो एक्शन प्लान पूरी तरह से टाइम बाउंड है और जो भी इस एक्शन प्लान को हम इंप्लीमेंट करेंगे तो इसकी प्रॉपर मॉनिटरिंग होगी पीरियोडिकल भी होगी मंथली भी होगी क्वार्टरली भी होगी Rajnath Singh also said a new concept called border security grid will also be implemented with the suggestions of all stakeholders of Jammu and Kashmir Rajasthan Punjab and Gujarat he also cautioned leaders to exercise restraint in their comments on security challenges before the country at a time when tension between India and Pakistan has increased. This is a new concept. And in this meeting, the government of the government, 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 the government फाइनल सेफ देंगे और उस आधार पर स्टेट्स को गाइडलाइन सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट के द्वारा जारी की जाएंगे। The review meet was attended by Rajasthan Chief Minister Vasundra Raje, Deputy Chief Minister of Punjab Sukhbir Singh Badal, Gujarat's Minister of State for Home Pradeep Singh Jadeja, and Jammu and Kashmir Chief Secretary Brijraj Sharma. On the second day of the meet on Saturday, Singh will tour border areas of Rajasthan and visit outposts to assess the situation along the Indo-Pak border. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha Television. Well, over a week since the surgical strikes across the LOC, the verbal duel between political parties on the issue has intensified further. While the BJP and the Congress have blamed each other for politicizing the issue and expressed support for the armed forces, the leader from other parties advised restraint on the matter. Well, Congress party ke 
राहुल गांधी ने जब जवानों के खून की दलाली का शब्द प्रयोग किया तब उन्होंने सभी सीमाओं को लांग दिया है इंतहा ही कर दी है मैं मानता हूं कि राहुल गांधी का इस शब्द प्रयोग इस सेना की वीरता का अपमान है देश की सवा सौ करोड़ जनता का अपमान है Responding to the remarks made by Rahul Gandhi at a public rally on Thursday, the BJP president accused the Congress of playing politics on the issue of surgical strikes across the LOC. The Congress vice president also faced criticism from other parties, including some allies. Rahul Gandhi ji ne jo sena ke shahadat ko unki bahadri ko khoon ki dalali bola hai, ye mujhe lagta hai thik nahi hai. Iski kadi ninda karte hain ham. Rahul Gandhi ठीक से matter को नहीं रख पाया। The Congress tried to defend its leader while launching a spirited counterattack on the BJP and Prime Minister Narendra Modi। जो extern हुए हो, तड़ी बाज हो, वो हमें बताएंगे कि किसके मूल में खोट हैं। जिनके खिलाफ murder के मुकदमे हो, वो आज हमें बताएंगे। कि राहुल गांधी के मूल में खोट है कुर्बानी की घड़ी में उनकी शहादत पर गौरव करने और उनका दुख बांटने की बजाय सम्मान समारोह गोवा से और आगरा तक उन्हें फुर्सत है पर किसी शहीद के घर जाने की ना प्रधानमंत्री ना रक्षा मंत्री को फुर्सत है Indian forces conducted surgical strikes across the LOC in Jammu and Kashmir last week to neutralize terrorist groups since then, several controversial statements from both the ruling party and the opposition have fired a verbal duel between the both sides. With Pranav Goswami, Vishal Dahiya, Rajya Sabha TV, Delhi. For three months uh, since the killing of militant uh, Burhan Wani by the security forces, the situation in the Kashmir Valley refuses to calm down. The valley remained shut for the 91st day on Friday as uh, offices and business establishments and educational institutions stayed closed. Now with schools and colleges being shut for three months now, the education of the state's children is now the biggest civilian concern. Kashmir remained under lockdown for the 91st day on Friday. The valley is in the middle of one of its worst unrest which started in July following the death of Hezbollah Mujahideen terrorist Burhan Wani. More than 80 civilians have died and thousands have been injured in these three months. Security and police personnel dressed in riot gear is a common sight in the valley where roads stay largely deserted. Schools, markets and offices have remained shut for three months. Education is perhaps the worst hit. पूरी तरह से मुतासिर हुए हैं हमारा सेल्बस पूरा इनकंप्लीट है ज़्यादातर के प्रैक्टिकल जो हमने अभी मार्च से देखे भी नहीं थी और मैंने इन तीन महीनों में कुछ नहीं पढ़ा है क्योंकि हम बाहर घर से बाहर नहीं निकलते बहुत खराब है यहाँ के माहौल भी और इसलिए हम बाहर कैसे निकल सकते हैं जो बच्चे कल तक किताबें लेके चल रहे थे तो आज वो घर में बैठे हैं उनको अब वहम गुमान भी नहीं है किताबों की तरह उनका ध्यान भी नहीं जाता है बाहर से जब देखते हैं कहीं पे टायर गैस शेलिंग कहीं पे गोलियां कहीं पे पैलेट पैलेट गन्स बच्चे भी उखता जाते हैं कि आखिर वजह क्या है ये डिप्रेशन तो उनको किसी भी हालत में हो जाएगा लेकिन इस डिप्रेशन को दूर करना पड़ेगा गवर्नमेंट को सोचना पड़ेगा जल्दी से सोचना पड़ेगा कि क्या करना है सेपरेटिस हैव रिपीटेडली एक्सटेंडेड देयर शट डाउन कॉल keeping normal life in the valley paralyzed, even as they accuse the security forces of using excessive force. Even though curfew is not in place, restrictions on the assembly of people under Section 144 continues. Bureau Report, Radhi Sabha TV. Well, having failed consistently to internationalize the Kashmir issue, Pakistan now seems to be working on a different track by trying to link peace in Afghanistan with the situation in Kashmir. Now, Pakistan Prime Minister's Special Envoy Muhshahid Hussain Sayyid claimed in Washington that the world cannot compartmentalize peace, stating that there cannot be peace in Kabul and not Kashmir. He claimed that people of South Asia cannot be left a hostage to hostility of the past. Now, the Pakistani effort seems to hold out a threat to the entire South Asian region. 
The effort comes in uh, the wake of as many as five nations pulling out of the SARC summit in Islamabad recently. Meanwhile, a Pakistan parliament on Friday unanimously passed a resolution rejecting India's assertion that Kashmir is an integral part even as it called for a result-oriented dialogue with New Delhi for a resolution of all the outstanding issues, including Kashmir. Meanwhile, the United States has categorically stated that it will work with countries in the South Asia to eliminate safe havens of terrorists that also pose a threat to India. But while calling for a meaningful Indo-Pak dialogue to address the differences, including the Kashmir issue, State Department spokesperson John Kirby refrained from commenting on a bill in the Congress that calls on America to declare Pakistan a terrorist state. The U.S. also warned its citizens against a non-essential travel to Pakistan, saying that the country continues to experience significant terrorist violence, including sectarian attacks. Meanwhile, in another development, the Pakistan army said that all communication channels with the Indian military, including the hotline, are open. Director General of the Inter-Services Public Relations, uh, Lieutenant General Asim Bajwa said that contacts between Pakistani and Indian armies were being maintained. He also confirmed that the Director Generals of Military Operations had talked over the phone after the cross-LOC firing. And India will raise the issue of cross-border terrorism at the 8th BRIC Summit in Goa to be held on the 15th and 16th of October. To display support on the issue, India has invited the leaders of the seven-member BIMSTEC regional grouping to the summit. Now, this group includes immediate neighbours Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Bhutan and Nepal. The five-nation BRIC summit will focus on global economic downturn and cooperation with emerging countries during the two-day-long BRIC summit in Goa next week. India will also take up cross-border terrorism as a major agenda in the summit and will urge member countries to join efforts to tackle terrorism, including action against countries providing safe havens and arms to terrorists. So we will be looking at global economic and political situation. Uh, at, and obviously terrorism is a very important part of that. Uh, then we will look at global growth prospects, uh, role of BRICS in leading this global growth and our contributions to it. Uh, then in, in way forward, we look at BRICS and BRICS cooperation with other emerging economies. While Prime Minister Narendra Modi will meet Chinese President Xi Jinping before the commencement of the summit to create unanimity on terrorism, the issue of China blocking ban of Jaish e Mohammed Chief Masood Azhar by the UN will not be taken up at BRICS. The Prime Minister will also hold bilateral discussion with Russian President Vladimir Putin on a range of issues, including cooperation in the areas of defence, security, trade and investment. The meeting between the two comes in the backdrop of the first ever joint Russia-Pakistan military exercises last month. The three other agreements that have already been agreed are MOU on environmental cooperation, regulation on BRICS customs cooperation, and, a and an MOU on cooperation between uh, diplomatic academies of BRICS. India will also make efforts to revive the BIMSTEC, which assumed significance with the collapse of the recent SARC summit, after four countries apart from India pulled out of the meet to be hosted by Pakistan over the issue of cross-border terrorism. This is Akhilesh Suman's report for Rajya Sabha TV. And in news at 10, we'll take a very short break. Up next, we have all the international and sports news. We'll get you, you all the details on the movement of uh, Matthew as it is uh, pounding uh, the Carolina or, and also Georgia in United States. plant called vetiver, it's an aromatic medicinal plant, but happens to be also very efficient carbon sequester. Although it is like a grass, mm. it has very large root system. We can have a vetiver plantation throughout the country, even within national capital region, so that we can significantly reduce the atmospheric CO2. What you recover with Dr. Prashant Goswami, Director, CSIR Nistads, only on Rajya Sabha Television. Welcome back after the break. Now, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley on Friday discussed international taxation issues with the Commonwealth Finance Ministers to devise a common strategy in the backdrop of the Panama Papers leak. 
Jaitley, who is on an official visit to the United States, chaired the Commonwealth Finance Minister's meeting at the IMF headquarters in Washington. Now, during the meet, uh, two important issues, the economics of climate change and financing climate adaptation and mitigation and international taxation, a Commonwealth conversation around the Panama Papers were discussed and deliberated upon. Jaitley also chaired the Governing Council meeting of the BRICS contingent uh, reserve arrangement, wherein announced uh, the CRA being operational now. And Chairman of Bharti Airtel on Friday blamed a high pricing for the poor response to the government's mobile phone a spectrum auction that raised a total of $9.9 billion. Ms. Sunil Bharti Mittal said that the figure was uh, well below the $84 billion worth of spectrum on offer. However, as uh, carriers uh, shunned uh, the priciest category of airwaves, uh, snapping up less than half of the total on offer. He, however, welcomed the transparent auction process that has been adopted by the government. The pricing you have to yourself see, a six, nearly 60,000 crores for a small little tiny 5 megahertz is, it was bound to not get any response, so nobody should be surprised. I think the government did very well by putting it, uh, putting on the table a lot of spectrum and the government must be congratulated of running a fantastic, open, transparent process. On to the big international story and Hurricane Matthew is currently battering the coastline of the U.S. state of Florida after downgraded to a Category 2 storm. The hurricane is packing gusts of 177 km per hour and causing heavy downpour across the coastal areas and it continues to pose a sev severe flooding threat to much of Florida as well as coastal Georgia and South Carolina. Earlier, Matthew killed at least 800 people in Haiti on its destructive march north through the Caribbean. Matthew is a very big and a very bad, bad beast, and it's not going to go away in the next couple of days. Um, Matthew's obviously battered Haiti, it went on to Cuba, Bahamas uh, took a real hammering in the last couple of days, and it's now turning its fury towards, towards Florida, Georgia, and South Carolina. Hurricane Matthew described as a bad beast. The most powerful Caribbean storm in a decade, it has caused massive destruction, especially in Haiti. Even as rescue efforts are underway, the death toll here has soared to more than 800. The United Nations has warned it could take days for the full impact of Hurricane Matthew in Haiti to emerge. In the case of Haiti, um, what we've seen is that two, three years after the earthquake, the interest and the commitment of donors and partners to the reconstruction and rebuilding effort uh, diminished quite significantly. And that, I think, has fueled a level of fragility that, of course, makes, them, uh, makes us incapable of dealing with shocks. Most of the deaths in Haiti have been reported from the southwestern coast, where many areas remain cut off by the storm. The town of Jeremy has been 80% destroyed with hundreds of flattened houses. Some 3,50,000 people are in need of assistance, but communication with the areas worst affected has been hampered by lack of phone coverage and downed power lines. Worse, with the sanitation system already overwhelmed in Haiti, there are now concerns about a surge in cholera cases. Mais nous n'avons pas gagné. Ça, c'est business, nous. Regardez. Pas gagné rien qui est été. Tout le monde est Tout le monde est crasé. Pas gagné de caille. Pas gagné de manger. One of the things we'll be doing in the beginning is getting those communication systems up. We'll bring in uh, technology to help do that. Uh, we also have warehouses with relief supplies that we'll be distributing. And most worried about um, cholera. So we will be helping to distribute um, aqua tabs to purify the water. While Hurricane Matthew has weakened slightly and degraded to a Category 2 storm, it is currently winding its way up the southeastern U.S. coast. Florida coast is being battered by strong winds and rain. Four deaths have been reported due to storm here. More than half a million homes have lost power. State of emergency remains in place in Florida and in the states of Georgia, South Carolina and North Carolina. At least three million inhabitants have been ordered to evacuate their homes. Bureau report. Rajasabha TV.
Well, the 2016 Nobel Peace Prize has been awarded to Colombian President Juan Manuel Santos in recognition of his efforts to end the five-decade-long war in his country. Now, this comes despite a shock referendum defeat for a proposed peace deal that Santos had reached last month with FARC after nearly four years of talks. The Nobel Committee has recognized Colombian President Juan Manuel Santos's efforts to end five decades of war in his country. He has been awarded this year's Nobel Peace Prize. The Norwegian Nobel Committee has decided to award the Nobel Peace Prize for 2016 to Colombian President Juan Manuel Santos for his resolute efforts to bring the country's more than 50-year-long civil war to an end. A war that had cost, has cost the life of at, lives of at least 220,000 Colombians and displaced close to 6 million people. The award should also be seen as a tribute to the Colombian people who, despite great hardships and abuses, have not given up hope of a just peace and to all the parties who have contributed to this peace process. The announcement on Friday comes less than a week after Colombians voted no to the agreement signed between the Marxist rebels and the country's government. Despite the vote, however, Santos has promised to revive the peace plan, which was believed to be too lenient on the FARC guerrillas. The outcome of the vote was not what President Santos wanted. A narrow majority of the over 13 million Colombians who cast their ballots said no to the accord. <clears throat> this result has created great uncertainty as to the future of Colombia. There is a real danger that the peace process will come to a halt and that civil war will flare up again. This makes it even more important that the parties headed by President Santos and FARC guerrilla leader Rodrigo Londoño continue to respect the ceasefire. 65-year-old Santos led a major offensive against the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia, or FARC, when he was the country's defense minister from 2006 to 2009. After becoming president in 2010, he shifted tack and negotiated for a settlement with the guerrillas, even putting his presidency at stake due to the fierce opposition to talks from former allies. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Let's get you some more international news stories in World Rap. U.S. President Barack Obama has formally eased long-standing sanctions on Myanmar. Obama issued the executive order weeks after meeting Myanmar's uh, de facto leader Aung San Suu Kyi. Myanmar's access to trade benefits for poorer nations was suspended in 1989 over human rights abuses. The United States has officially accused Russia of a cyber attacks against political organizations in order to interfere with its election. U.S. Department of Homeland Security said that the recent hacked emails were consistent with the methods and motivation of Russia-directed efforts. Russia says the claims of its involvement in the cyber attacks were nonsense. Data revealing discussions within the Democratic Party was hacked earlier this year. An increase in activity at the North Korea's nuclear test site has been reported. A monitoring group says it could signal preparations for a new test or a collection of data from its last one. North Korea conducted its uh, fifth and the biggest nuclear test on 9th of September and there has been now a speculation that Pyongyang could mark the 10th of October anniversary of its uh, founding of its Workers' Party with a sixth detonation. U.S. has uh, expressed a disappointment uh, with the way Russia and China have been exercising their veto powers in the United Nations Security Council. White House uh, Press Secretary Josh Ernest said that the improper use of veto power prevents as much action from the U.N. as they would like to see. The U.S. also underscored the need to reform the powerful wing of the world body. 
Let's get you some sports news. In a big blow to the BCCI, the Supreme Court has stopped it from releasing funds to the state associations. Now postponing its hearing till 17th of October on the BCCI versus the Lodha Committee matter, the Supreme Court also said that the state cricket bodies will not disburse the funds already given to them without passing a resolution to implement the Supreme Court ordered reforms. The Apex Court has also asked the BCCI President Anurag Thakur to file an affidavit stating whether he asked the ICC to say that the implementation of the Supreme Court order reforms would lead to BCCI being disqualified. In response, BCCI said that it is not running away from reforms, but there were certain technical and legal issue, issues that need to be addressed. The BCCI has already disbursed funds to 17 state units. BCCI के अध्यक्ष को पर्सनल एफिडेविट देना है कोर्ट में और ये बताना है कि उन्होंने आईसीसी से ये पैर भी किया था कि नहीं कि वो लिख के दे दे कि सुप्रीम कोर्ट का इंटरफेरेंस होने से आईसीसी से BCCI बर्खास्त हो जाएगा ये दुर्भाग है कि BCCI के अध्यक्ष के खिलाफ में आज सुप्रीम कोर्ट से ऐसा आदेश पारित हुआ है News from the ground. Well, for the third consecutive time in the series, Captain Virat Kohli won the coin and uh, adopted to bat first in the third in the final India versus New Zealand test in Indore. India, who have already pocketed the series 2-0, uh, were forced to make two changes to their playing 11 from the Kolkata test. Gautam Gambhir, who last played for India in 2014, returned to the 11, replacing injured Shikhar Dhawan. The second change is uh, Pesar Umesh Yadav, who replaced Bhuvneshwar Kumar, who is suffering from a back strain. On the other hand, New Zealand captain Kane Williamson, who missed the second test, is back for the game and is joined by all-rounder James Nisham in the playing 11. Well, that's all in this edition of news. But before we go, we take a look at the 84th Indian Air Force Day celebrations, which kicked off at the Hindon Air Base in Ghaziabad today. Well, Air Force Chief Arup Raha also conferred Vayu Sena medals and wishes to save our medals to the officers. The annual air show is slated to be extra special this year as coveted fighter jet Tejas will be making its first fly pass to a captivated audience. Take a look. Thanks for watching. In the rear rank from left to right we have the background music. A plane with an open cockpit being flown by Wing Commander Himanshu Kultreshta, waving at you. The Tiger Moth has a provides an edge to IF's tactical, airlift and special operations capability.